All right. So just going to go over the implementation a little bit on the process that we did to migrate from our previous space management system, which was famous, into, into Archibus. And at the end, I have a lot of screenshots, um, which hopefully you find um, valuable or maybe um, brings up some questions for you. A little bit on facts, and um, you can get a lot of this information by going to facts.stanford.edu. But we do have uh, 13,000 employees and faculty. We have 8,100 8, um, acres, 700 major buildings, um, but we, that's only because we don't include in this, um, in this here the, the small sheds and containers and, and all of the other little um, temporary trailers that show up on campus about 15 years ago, and they're still there. Um, but otherwise, we, otherwise we're, we're close into 800 numbers. And also, um, this is on campus. We have um, facilities off campus in Monterey and some, you know, Beijing and some other places as well. Um, so it's probably good on that. Oops, don't hold down the button. I don't know why I put up images of campus, but I thought it, they, it's, it's pretty, I guess. Um, I, I like the campus. It's going to be hard to, um, to, uh, to move away from, uh, from this or retire from this because um, I, just, I just really, really like it. And plus, if I do retire, I could still use all the facilities, so maybe I shouldn't move away from the area. <laughs> but um, it, it's, it's a nice campus. I love, I love it. So my responsibility has got a, kind of a, a, a wide range. We oversee the plans review process. So we, um, we are paperless now. So we will receive um, PDF files for plans review. And we host that um, in Bluebeam. Uh, we have uh, committees and commenters that will then go in and comment um, inside of Bluebeam um, on that, you know, like fire marshal's office and EH&S, various groups um, on campus, the grounds pe um, people, as, as an example. Um, we also uh, manage the turnover process, so we get all of the documents at the uh, beginning and then all of the final documents at the end. We put that into um, a, a document management system that users can then pull up the information um, online. The, right now, the, um, the CAD and, and um, all, all that's available for, for the users, and when I do say users, it, it, this is just mainly the, um, campus, uh, facilities, operations, staff, and, and various units. Um, uh, they pull up PDF files, so they don't have the ability to say download like a Revit file if we receive that, or or AutoCAD files, or you know the structural drawings of that. Right now, it's just um, they on demand. They have to ask ask for that information. Um, what else in here? I assign um, for part of the plans review process is to make sure that the room numbers um, are following our our our, our, our guidelines, if you will. Um, because sometimes when you're looking at a 2D drawing um, and you number the rooms going a certain way, especially with workstations now, um, which is really big on our campus, walls are coming down and, and there's just a lot of, a lot of little you know, desks, including mine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait, are we recording? Because I've got to be careful <laughs> what I say. Someone at Stanford's going to read this. So, yeah, so uh, look at the room numbers, uh, sign building IDs. Um, we have our buildings broken up into quads and then building numbers. So we have a building 100 that's in quad one and quad two and quad three. Um, so that's, that's part of, my, part of uh, what I do. Also with addresses, sign addresses, work with um, agencies, counties, the postmaster in San Francisco to make sure the uh, addresses are implemented into their system, Google Maps to make sure if someone wants to put pop in the address for new buildings and stuff like that, um, go through. Of course, um, then floor plans and um, building floor room alias. We track a lot of attributes um, at a building floor and, and room level. Well, <laughs> I think it's a lot. Maybe you guys are tracking more than us, but I don't know. Um, speaking of what we track, uh, here you can see some, some of the facility types we have, parking garages, barns, storage containers, fountains. Everything has an ID um, for things like structures or, or even, even artwork. 
um, that's out in a field or something somewhere. These have IDs. We do put, instead of a building number like, say, 101-100 one, um, for the main quad, it'll have an S in the beginning that identifies it as a structure. And then we also use L for like landscape work. So you, it has a little bit of intelligence in the ID. But everything has to be tracked um, in, the, in the database. And then it allows for um, attaching that to, to a map and, and various things you can click and then launch a, a page. I'll show that to you. Um, probably read th right through the rest of the end. The other big thing, and I'll show a screenshot on that just so I can get through this, is time periods. But I'll talk to the, um, about that in a minute. So when we replaced our old system, we had it for 15 years. So as I, well, I see a lot of uh, uh, other presentations, what other people are doing, I feel we're, we're pretty far behind and that we were kind of stagnant for 15, 15 years with this. It matured nicely. Um, a lot of people didn't want to change, but now that we have um, moved, migrated into, into a, um, a system, it'll allow us to maybe link um, Revit files and, and kind of move forward with lease management, occupancy. There's other modules that are going to um, allow us. But, so we did have to replace iSpace is what we call the end user application through a browser. I'll show some screenshots of that. So that was replaced. Our AutoCAD tools were upgraded. Um, I've got some screenshots um, for that. And um, what other things? Um, we still had to redo the links for our org hierarchy um, system. We get from the, the university org, org hierarchy we bring in, because we track spaces at different levels. We have parent org codes at level two, and you know departments, divisions, and various things. And so um, we had to to um, basically replace this with a new one and, and, and redo our APIs and other pieces of data. 15 years, documenting requirements. So yes, we did, um, we did create an Excel file, documented um, current functionality. We needed to make sure, especially because every department has one or more um, space coordinators that are required to go in and certify their space um, annually. And we wanted to make sure it had the same, func um, similar functionality um, and requirements um, on that. And then also with, with that Excel file, we kind of tried to get a little bit forward thinking and what, you know, what do we want to do that we're not doing now and make sure that we put that into the requirements um, when we roll that out. The RFP, this, this took me quite a while because I never wrote an RFP before. Um, thankfully, um, I used a Google search <laughs> to get some templates and reached out to other universities who had some um, RFPs put together. And so, so I got that, sent it out, sent it to a bunch of vendors, um, brought in um, three vendors, I believe it was, yes, um, provided 10 questions, gave them the um, chance to um, come, come in in person and go through those 10 um, questions and answer how their application or system would, would um, focus on that. This was for a group of people um, that were about seven um, from other schools in the university. So it was a, basically a joint um, decision on which vendor they, everyone felt comfortable with um, when we did move forward with Archibus. Key requirements, I believe I um, spoke through this. A lot of things is um, uh, people wanted less clicks. Um, it just sometimes it took a lot of clicks. You have to copy the time period and then change the dates and you had to go to all of these different screens. So we did consolidate that. So we have some, um, some efficiency there. We do have um, some real time floor plans that users can now just kind of navigate previously. And I'll show you a list of rooms is what the users saw and they could click on room you know, 116A. Now, if they don't know the room numbers, they can look at a floor plan and say, I need to update this lab, and they can just click on the room and it will launch the, um, the update screen. So they don't need to know the room numbers um, as long as they know how to read a floor plan. They're fine. This is just to show kind of how we laid out uh, the requirements in Excel and attached this to the RFP. Just wanted to make sure if, you know, if this is a fit, you know, can the application do it? Is there going to be customization involved? Again, over 15 years, we kind of tacked, put, put on a little additional things on here. And so some of the items that we um, wanted to keep um, moving forward were customizations, and we had to pay a little bit extra for that, but not much. Um, can everybody read these really good? Yeah, you need to get glasses then. <laughs> All right, I can't even read it from here. So we, <laughs> is this being recorded again? 
Um, this guy won't answer me. <laughs> I tried twice. No, I'm just joking. All right, so we did have a, we had a, so we had a, we had a core team. It's basically the same core team that, that, we, that we have, and, and we meet monthly to look at you know, future enhancements. We have an enhancement list and, and how to uh, make the system better. And then we reached out. We had a, a, a user group, which included some space coordinators, um, people from like the School of Medicine, School of Engineering that, they, that utilize the data for facility operation purposes, and especially when they need to move people around temporarily or, or, per, or permanently. Um, and then, yeah, we c kept communication with a, the larger group as well, which is the 200 um, plus, we're a little over 200 now, space coordinators that um, have access, update access um, into the system to update room data. And project timeline, um, I was pretty lazy when I put this together. This is an um, older screenshot. We started a, a little bit later than this, just took us a while to get some approvals and contracts. Um, going forward. We went live in the um, first week of December in 2018, and then after the Christmas break, we started working on some post-production items that we needed to, to finish, but um, things have been going um, awesome and really smoothly. And I got my weekends back, which is pretty cool. So um, I thought I hid this one, not really much to talk about, but we did, you know, we, we have project manager and, and leads, technical leads, and we just identified some responsibilities just to be clear. Um, you know, who was supposed to do what, especially for me, probably is why they created this. Because when I get in, I just, I just want to do work, and sometimes I might be doing, stepping on some other people's toes or something, I don't know. Uh, so we used Google Drive um, and had a little dashboard for um, various users on the, uh, on the um, project to go in to look at the technical um, documents and various other um, documents there, smart sheet for project plan. JIRA, we track, I don't know if you've heard of these tools, maybe everyone has heard of these tools, but we use JIRA to track all of our tickets, um, any, any issues, and so that way also the vendor um, could, could log into JIRA and, and uh, basically reassign it to us when they fix the problems. Um, and we also use boxes, some of the documents. We, um, we did have a, actually the we, we ended up meeting um, weekly for two hours um, on Monday one to three in the afternoon um, and that was with a little bit larger um, the um, working group and then we had the project team uh, which um, also met weekly um, for for an hour um, when you get too many people in a room um, and you're trying to implement and saying well I need it to be this color or I need the button to be over here and this and that. It's, it's kind of tough because every, you know, you, it's going to be conflicting. So the working, um, the, uh, the project team kind of just directed some of, some of that and um, took away some of those arguments, which, which worked out good. And of course, um, we had sponsors. Um, it was a million dollar project. I think we were only like 2,000 shy of being a million dollars to, to replace this. So we did have to, um, to meet quarterly with, with the sponsors. Um, and the university system governments group um, on that. So features, I think I probably went through this. Uh, we use uh, OBI for some of um, our reports. Uh, we had to redo those. We have a data warehouse. Um, so our space management system is the system of record for location information. It's pushed in to the data warehouse. Um, Oracle, um, a suite of products is used. Um, Oracle YAM, property manager. So a lot of group, anything that, um, like the registrar's office for classrooms, um, it's, it's room numbers, it's lookup information. So if the room number's not there, um, you, you're not going to be able to, to assign inf um, information to that and the other systems, which helps keep our floor plans and room information um, up to date and accurate, so, which is really nice. Is there any questions right now? All right, so a bunch of screenshots. Feel free to raise your hand if you, if you want. Uh, this is the old iSpace application. A lot of screens, almost anything you wanted to do, you had to go to a separate screen. Not that that's bad, but um, it, can, it can be consolidated, which makes it more efficient. Advanced search, uh, we, again, the space management, it's all, it's all about getting to, getting to a room and updating the um, attributes of, of a room that then is fed and um, floor plans are updated automatically nightly and I'll show, I'll show you that or it's fed into other systems. 
to get that information. Um, we do track um, time periods. Anytime there's a change, it's a, it's a start date as of you know, the beginning of the fiscal year. Uh, this faculty moved into the lab. They got 25% you know, of the lab. They're doing 80% of that is organized research. And then the rest of it is instruction. They're grading papers or doing something else um, on that. So we can search back to 2003. All of this data was brought into the new system. So we still have the ability to search back to 2003. We can, we can get square footage of a, what, what faculty member had um, in, in that year if we wanted to. So um, each of these is just a list of values which, which brought you to a different page. You had to select it and then it kind of came back here and populated and, and you had to switch that. After you search, you get a list um, of your search result grouped by a hundreds. You can export that screen report, or you can get the, the detail, which would give you the time periods. Because a room, if you search for a fiscal year, could have had five changes over that fiscal year. Because faculty can change how much percentage they're going to do on organized research, or they're stopping a specific grant that they worked on for six months and starting a different one. So that needs a different time period as well. So it gets a little complicated down, down at that level. Um, so then the users, after they got the search result, they click on a room to get to the room detail. Uh, this is where you can see what um, is going on in the room, the departments assigned. Um, this is a shared space. Uh, there's you know, two faculty member, another uh, faculty for this. It's a lab. And then you got your functional coding. Um, so users would basically have to, there's, it's cut off. There's a copy button. They'd have to copy it, click here, go into the department page add remove departments, go to the PI page, add and remove um, all, all the way down, and, and then submit. Um, but it was great. We had uh, built-in validation, so people couldn't sign organized research to a restroom or, or anything like that. Um, library department codes could only use certain room type codes in here, um, so it kept the, the data pretty clean. The new interface allows, um, we have the same advanced search up here. It looks a little different. Um, there are list of values for all of these. The list of values is a pop-up, so you can search on the list of values um, or scroll. And you can select multiple. In some cases, um, we wanted multiple searches um, available. And then the room, the results, is right here on the same screen. It's kind of in Web Central. And I'm not sure if anyone uses Archibus here is familiar with the Web Central. But you, there's a lot of templates that you can use to design um, what you want the end user to to see here. Um, yeah, and then you can jump in here. We, we have the um, exporting capabilities to Excel listed. And little similarities here. However, I don't have to jump to multiple screens now. I can simply just copy the time period. The copy will be here. It's a different color. I got my time period stamps, my room types here, some attributes. Um, some of the attributes here are not, uh, users are not able to enter that, like donor. Um, information. So if there is a official room name, then that comes from the donor, um, the Office of Development, and we get a data feed um, into and that field's populated automatically in here. And then also um, through OBI or various other reports, you can get that information. So just in case you're curious, some of these fields, again, um, are not editable because they do come in from other data feeds. We also track. Um, uh, you can't see it here because this is scrollable, but we have the modified date and user um, when, when in the, they created the time period or updated the time period. And there's a lot of validation that's, that's involved um, in, in this on the back end. So these are tabs. You start here with the search, what I showed earlier, and the search results, and you jump over here. There is a floor plan tab. So if you don't want to do the advanced search and get a list, you can just go and bring up a floor plan and pick on a room. And when you, when you select a room, it will bring you here for your updating. Um, and then you know, update, copy, submit, update, submit. Um, and then you can jump back to the floor plan and, pick an, and choose another room. So, and that's what this tab is here. You could just search on the floor plans, bring it up. We haven't gotten too far with this yet. We have the ability to um, annotate. So if, if you hover over, you can see the room type codes, department codes, um, and color codes as well. Uh, we can choose what colors or hatch patterns we want for 
room types or the room class classifications like 100 series and 200 series for labs, 300 series for offices. So um, we'll pr we may expand on this. I'm not sure yet because users are using a another two, um, graphical reporting, up, which I'll show you in a little bit. Am I talking a little too fast? All right. I always blame it on the coffee, but I think it's just me. So Web Central has a dashboard. Users can come to this dashboard, though we have a HTML homepage, so they can just type in ispace.stanford.edu. And then we provide buttons that will take them directly to a specific report or to the advanced search, um, so they don't have to, to use this. We, we'll see how it goes um, as we go forward more, because I feel that this is really useful um, we have reports. You, you, you can just build this, uh, as you can see. You can background data. I can go in and add a room type code if I need to. I don't have to worry about changing a department code because that comes from um, our HR system. So we're getting that automatically every night if the departments do change. Um, rarely do departments switch parents, um, but sometimes they do go to a different parent. And thankfully now, I don't have to worry about uh, manually changing the reports to um, item. Uh, so, but we do have some background. This is nice also because it's role-based. So I can go in or um, anybody on my team who's assigned to the admin role, we can go in and, and identify you know, what, what roles can see what in here and can they edit or just view only. So we have department contacts. We have room contacts. A space coordinator is, is a contact. We have what's called a FYI. Anytime someone updates a room, the space coordinators for that department code and anybody that's identified as an FYI gets an email notification. We um, now send those nightly. So if I make 10 changes, they get one email with all of those changes with links in case they want to come in and look at the data. The old system, it was one email for every change. And so at the end of the fiscal year, when it, that's when everyone goes in and makes their updates, for most of the people anyway. They wait till the end of the fiscal year. And then, of course, the supervisors are FYIs, and, and they're like, I got 32 emails today, you know, because my staff went in and, and made a bunch of updates. So that was a big, um, big complaint that we took care of. And um, what is this here? We're just showing some of, oh, validation rules. This is also pretty nice because I have the ability to kind of come in and do some validation rules through this interface rather than going into the back end um, of the database. Uh, this is just a, a sample report. You, you have all kinds of tools. You know, what, what do you want to search on for your report? And then, of course, you have the data and you can export it to Excel if, if, if you need to, or just pop it up and, into another screen just to scroll through and look at the data. And this is School Medicine actually asked for this audit report. They wanted to be able to see all of the, all of the rooms within the School Medicine under their parent org that haven't been updated in the last six months or two years or five years. Um, it, maybe their space coordinators aren't doing a good job in their space certification process. Uh, smart Client, this is part of the um, Archibus tools. Um, when you install Smart Client, that's what also the, the um, AutoCAD add-in and, um, and Revit um, add-in tool um, is um, based, based on this um, smart client. This is pretty powerful. Uh, there's only two of us that have access to this because I can accidentally delete a, a building in here. So I typically don't use this too much except for import and export. Um, this is great for we do have departments that move around a lot or a new building. I'll give an Excel file to, um, to say, a building manager, facility manager, or space coordinator. They can fill that Excel file out. What's the room type of, of the room? And what department's in there? I upload it here. I have a script that I run. And boom, the time period's created, and all the information's added there. So it literally takes me 10 minutes once I get that Excel file. And this is just kind of a screenshot. Um, this is just from my, from my desktop. Um, we have various things, right? Departments move in and out of, um, out of rooms um, or in and out of buildings. So those are global changes. 
So I just <laughs> wrote a bunch of SQL scripts that will allow me to do replacements on those, create new time periods, um, because uh, we need to track that at different time periods. Of course, we have deactivations. You know, a lease is up and outside, so we need to deactivate that building. We have a status field, identifies if buildings are active or, or inactive. The same thing with rooms. Um, so deactivating a building means you have to end date the time periods, change the status of the room, change the status of the floor, change the status of the building. So much better to just write a script that just does that all. So I just, you know, what's the building ID? And I type it in and it does it for me. So uh, the no other nice thing is this, this is going to be moved eventually into Web Central. They have an SQL engine. So that can then be put in. So I don't, have to, I don't want this on my desktop and be the only one that can do this. We can put it into, um, into Web Central. Other users can then just click and provide the information on the screen, hit run, and let the SQL engine, um, engine do, its, do its thing. Um, we, another reason why we wanted to move in, into another application um, well, there's a lot of reasons, but um, is, is we needed a, a, something that we could use out in the field, an iPhone or iPad. It's not really user-friendly on an iPhone, better, better on an iPad. Allow the users to pick a building and a floor, click on it. Right now, we're just giving them a field to put in comments. Then they can go back, push this information. It comes into a, a screen in Web Central. They can then grab, have two screens or two, two um two web browsers open, look at their comments, and update the room. It's our first step in, in trying to provide a, a, mo a mobile a space survey to give them out in the field. Space view, this, uh, this, so this, this is um, RSC is, is the vendor that we use to, to help us with the, um, our migration into the um, new system, and they, they provide this tool here. It's, just, it's a nice campus map. You can click on the building, get building information. You can get the floors, pull up floor information. Find a person um, if, if, if they're, if they're um, being tracked, and they said there's, um, there's Stanford uh, WHO information as pub Stanford public um, and not private. Um, then they can come be, be found there searching for room types. So, uh, who, who hears from universities? Is everyone in here from a university or? Yeah. So do you um, have like a building page, like a landing page for your building that has compiled information? Just curious. Some, some do, some don't. Yeah. We've had this for, for, some, for some time, picture of a building. Yeah, and this is zoomed in a little bit too much. It's kind of an automated feature, but you can at least zoom out to see where the building is. All of this information comes from our space management system. This is, this is going to be upgraded. This is Cold Fusion that uses um, you know, SQL select statements, um, not directly to the database anymore. So this, um, this is just going to materialize views that are updated nightly, um, where previously it was going directly to the production um, tables. So users here can get um, various reports. And this allows us um, to provide, through work, work group security, different levels of, of access for people. But uh, floor plans is a great, uh, is, is used a lot. Um, and I'm going to show you the color-coded floor plans. But again, we've got square footages, parcels, uh, zones. We, we use zone codes and zone management, a group of a group of uh, shop people and, and trades are just um, man, um, responsible for certain types of buildings. So it's not necessarily a ge geographic area because the buildings could be all over. So certain lab types, um, so their specialty would be that versus a um, all classroom building or something. And that's what the zone value is. Not that you care, but. Uh, our floor plans, users really like the, the 11 by 17 uh, PDF files that they can print out or just view on the screen. So we're still, um, still providing that uh, functionality or ability to them. Here, uh, we do have uh, multiple reports. We have a, what's called a building stack, which would just uh, show rectangles of each floor and color code the percentage of, you know, based on whatever it is, PI, primary individuals, or departments, room type codes. Um, or functions um, on that. And then just the plain floor plans, which would just show the walls, windows, and doors. And how are these generated? That's a good question. Did you, did you tell her to ask? Oh, that? Okay. I just 
<laughs> the, no, this is no. It's a good. It's a good question. It, I, I do have a lot of fun. This this is the uh, graphical report server um, from ACAP Plus. It basically um, it is they're generated every night based on a modified date that is in the field. So if I go into a room, copy a time period, change the department code, um, tomorrow the department floor plan will show the new information. Um, so, and that yeah, that's that runs around. 5 a.m. I think it is. Because I know this morning when I got up, it's two hours different, so it was like 4.20, and it didn't run yet. So I was like, oh, I had to remind myself of different times. So. Um, we don't require people to put in occupants, but a lot of groups, especially the School of Medicine, um, they do maintain room occupants. So we, um, their floor plans are pretty complete to show room occupants um, on that. So they use that. Use that frequency frequently. Do they have their own access equipment? Y yes, they through through the yeah through the the web central um, tool there there is a, a the ability for them to just populate that and it uses um, it uses a Hulit connection so it has to look up and the person has to be in the HR system um, to in order to find them and, and choose them. And this is not necessarily super pretty, but we are still in, in 2D. You know, we just have a simple title block and, and, and a legend that shows the square footage quantity of rooms um, based on whatever this report is by department or primary individual um, or room type. So I do have a little zoom in there. Um, and a lot of people like the color in Hatch because some do print out, um, which I didn't know until we went live with this system or shortly after. They print these out in black and white. And so just the colors, because I wanted to do solid colors um, on them. I thought it looked nicer. But then it's, it's, it's not useful to them because they print it out in black and white. So. And just <clears throat> so we upgraded um, the uh, with Famous came the uh, Famous CAD. Is anyone on Famous or were you ever on Famous? Yeah, yeah. So we uh, did you have Famous CAD? Did you use Famous CAD? So we we really like this the tool set. Being able to export, see the you know the rooms that are being added, r removed, modified, create a PDF of that. Um, on demand or, or just report, someone needs a report real quick, we can annotate or color code. I can create new reports so other, other people on my staff can just come in here and, and, and generate those. Um, and that's what this one is here. Did I pass one or no, it's the next one, yes. So this is just the, ex, the export feature. I can, here I can see if there were any new rooms um, that were created. Uh, or modified or deleted. This can then just be saved um, to, a, to a file. It is saved to a file in a directory, so we have this for, for history purposes. There's a lot more in here. I could spend 45 minutes easy on, on this. And I can view the data. I can, I can select a room here and, and have it show me where it is, or I can just click on a room and see what the data is. Um, currently in the, in the database. So that's, that's pretty cool, too. Those are the, probably the, the, the key ones, the exporting, the reporting, and, and the viewing of the, of the data. Uh, what's next? Hopefully, we'll get more into um, some, some Revit and um, get away from polylining. Um, yeah, every darn room and the workstations are crazy because everyone wants a room number to be associated with the workstation. You're like, really? I have to create a polyline for every darn workstation in here? It takes a lot of time um, on that. And um, yeah, more ad hoc reporting capabilities for end users. Um, OBI is nice, but it, there's a big learning curve. And not everyone wants to actually get in there and learn how to drag and drop fields to create reports. They just want the report. And that's it. I'm a little early. Yes. Questions? Yes. In the previous slide, you were talking about upcoming modules and we have leaf management. Mm -hmm. um, leaf management has been really a change for us because it could be copied on the system real estate department and then sometimes we don't get copied. So to what extent do you manage? What do you mean? What kind of data do you envision in this leaf management? 
Yeah, so I don't have all the, the, the answers for, for the modules, but we want to, um, there's just been discussions and issues that we could probably um, solve with using lease management. We, we, it wouldn't be the official lease management application. We would pull in some of the data from the real estate office. That way we could just then provide it all in one, in one, one area. We could have, we'd have the ability for floor plans and, or just alphanumeric um, textual reports with that. I don't know if that answered the question too much, but um, yeah, so it's not going to be. If you're interested in what is the length of the lease so that you'll have the tenant in a given room and then maybe as sort of a ticker when it expires? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, we, just some simple information. Yeah, because as it is now, I have a lot of reminders on my calendar, right? So every like six months, it says, hey, check out the leases. And I do have a comments field when I create building IDs because, you know, real estate office, they, they can't put in the, the you know, the, the, the building ID or address until they get, it's in my system. So they tell me when the lease is supposed to expire. So I have to run, a, I have a report that I run every six months and I, I have to read through all the comments. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Space survey, as far as uh, so, what we have another another department, Office of Research Administration. They, um, in fact, we have a report from that dashboard that I showed that will export data into um, Excel that is then imported into a Chris system. I don't know much about that, but I think if you Chris is an application or system that's used a lot for indirect cost recovery. Um, no, it's, it's the, the screen I showed where they can go in and search on rooms and then get a list of rooms and then there's an edit screen. They copy a time period and create that. That, that allows us for, for tracking on an annualized basis. And then the CRIS report that, that they can ex, export, the Office of Research Administration, it will take that and create like a, a room 100.1 and a room 100.2 if the room was used six months for um, one use or department and it's six months for another. So the, the report's automatic now. Does that answer your question? Uh, well, you, you mentioned that some departments might not have updated their data in you know, five years. Right, yeah. Yeah, that's what the School of Medicine is, is trying to, to, uh, to avoid from happening. So every year, we, we send out email notifications. We set up training. Um, we have open labs every month, um, all year round, for space coordinators come in whenever they move. Um, at the end of the year, they have, um, they have to basically sign a, a certification. They have to print a report that had lists all of, all of their rooms where their department was with their, in the faculty and percentage. They have to sign that and e scan, email it until we get, go online and email that to the Office of Research Administration. So they, they have to attend training. They have, um, so we get signatures that they attended the training and then they have to um, sign that certification report that they have verified all of their space. And then there's a few months process where the Office of Research Administration goes through this application through reports or just in, in the, in, inside searching um, to verify various pieces of information. But yeah, I mean, it's still possible that a, a department could be in a room for, for a while without anyone having actually gone in and updating it. Yes, in the back. RSC, um, Robert Stevens <coughs> Consulting. Um, they're, they're close to us, but they do work all, all over. Um, but yeah, so I didn't realize in th this until um, after I started sending out the RFPs um, because Archibus didn't respond to the RFP. But I guess there's just resellers for Archibus, right? Or, or um, whatever they're called, but that, that do implementations. Archibus doesn't actually do it them, themselves. So yeah, so we worked with RSC and they have a couple tools, this, this um, survey tool, mobile survey and in the map that you saw, but um, yeah. 
definitely happy with the system. After 15 years, I, I was a little concerned that we weren't going to be able to replace it um, and have the same functionality or, or you make sure all the users are going to be able to go in and enter the data. Um, but now I'm definitely relieved um, that, that we made it after um, 14 months or so on, on this project. Any other questions? No one wants to ask if they can buy me a beer later? <laughs> yeah, I'll ask that. Can I buy you a beer, Bill? Yes. Yes, you can. You can. <laughs>